Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's Thursday, the 17th day of June, 2021. And as the thumbnail graphic back there shows you, we're going to talk about 92L mostly today. It is slowly getting its act together and it'll eventually head up towards the central Gulf Coast region and spread a lot of moisture into that area and the southeast as a whole over the next few days. But I'm not too concerned about it ramping up into a big wind machine, nor will it have a very low pressure. It's kind of one of these hybrid systems, kind of missing the boat. It didn't take advantage of the opportunity that was out there. And it's also competing with a system in the Pacific. And so it's one of these weak June systems that you know, will be a nuisance uh, for some, a problem for others, depending on where you are. Yes, 10 inches of rain in your neighborhood can be a big problem. So we got to take it seriously. And uh, we'll talk about that and more in today's update. All right, so let's get started. Here it is down in the southern Gulf of Mexico as of 8 a.m. this morning. Pretty much shoe-in to develop 90% chance. But the one thing that's interesting is that they mention in the forecast, let's just look at the graphical outlook with the paragraph below. For the first time, I have noticed sort of a new uh, phrase in here that they've inserted um, this is from Dr. Pash here, Dr. Richard Pash. That word subtropical. The system is expected to move northward, and a tropical or subtropical depression is likely to form. Anytime you see that word subtropical, you know, oh, okay, this probably isn't going to ramp up into much of a, a big wind event. But it's still certainly worthy of taking note of small craft interest in the Gulf of Mexico, the oil industry down there, any aircraft operations that fly out to the different rigs, people along the coast, especially that this is going to be happening over the weekend. Yes, there's going to be impacts, but when I see that word subtropical, I think, oh, okay, loosely organized, diffuse, if you will, energy spread out over a larger area, not as intense and classic as a truly tropical storm would be, but it's there and we got to address it and deal with the impacts, whatever they may be. So on the infrared satellite shot here, you can clearly see this sort of curly Q nature to it. It looks like a comma instead of a ball of convection with spiral banding. That's your first clue right there. Abundant dry air and wind shear over on this side. Despite the fact that there's plenty of warm water, Warm water alone does not give you tropical cyclones. You have to have a lot of other ingredients in place. And at least for this situation, those ingredients simply are not there. Off the coast of Mexico, we do have an area that looks like it's going to try to develop further. I'll show you that in more detail in just a moment. And over here in the islands, I mentioned a couple of days ago, the passage of some tropical wave energy through the area. Well, it certainly did so, and areas down here in the Windward Islands got hammered today. Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados, a few people uh, sort of hitting me up on Twitter and on YouTube with some comments that, hey, we got nailed down here by some heavy rain, some flooding, power outages, damages to homes, and these tropical waves can do that. They represent a lot of energy in the atmosphere. So, you know, this is the time of year when they're going to roll through every few days and despite the Saharan air layer out there it doesn't negate everything you know there's still going to be impacts from just a tropical wave so uh, I hear you I got you guys comments I saw your stuff on Twitter and hang in there you know that shows you what hurricanes can do even when they're not hurricanes right it's hurricane season and you know you see these strong upper level winds cutting across doesn't matter the tropical wave down here in the lower levels of the atmosphere coming through and giving that area a pretty good dose of inclement weather. And it should spread on more to the west with time, maybe bringing some showers and thunderstorms and gusty winds to parts of the northeast Caribbean, maybe even to Puerto Rico as time progresses. The tropical wave energy sitting down in this area, all of this slowly going to be moving off to the west and west-northwest with time. All right, let's look at the vorticity signature for 92L. I mean, come on. When I see this right here, as I tell you guys, that's not bundling. That is energy spread out over a large area. This is doing a better job of bundling here in the southeastern Pacific 
with, I think it's Invest Area 93E. The E is for Eastern Pacific. But yeah, there's one little concentrated area here. There's another one here. I think this is the one that will eventually take over. And it'll kind of pivot around and then come up in here somewhere near maybe Morgan City, maybe as far west as Vermilion Bay for the center of maximum vorticity or spin, the lowest level uh, pressure maybe, but all the sensible weather, the weather that you can feel and the weather that will impact you will be over to the east side of it because it's getting punched from the west by strong upper level winds. Um, and it's June, you know, June is a hard month for these systems. Climatology is not on their side, you know, and we saw that last year with Cristobal, a large uh, system last year that brought several feet of surge to parts of Mississippi and Louisiana. Cristobal was a high impact event for some people. And these systems can be too, depending on where you are and pinpointing exactly where the heaviest rains will fall and maybe even the threat of severe weather is impossible this early on. So that's why I want to make you aware of what's going on with the system. Boy, look at water temperatures, though. It's a good thing it's not going to ramp up in any uh, you know, strong fashion here because, wow, all of a sudden the northern Gulf Coast water temps, 29 and 30 Celsius, that's getting it. We're talking about 83, 84, 85, close to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So lots of low-level moisture to work with. Uh, this will get disrupted quite a bit. You'll see a little bit of a path carved in here. It's very easy to stir up the Gulf waters. And so I think we'll see that, especially as this churns through. But that is definitely uh, an eye-opening, I mean, wow. <laughs> My kind of water temperatures, although that's a little bit too warm, mid to upper 80s. But lots of moisture there for this to take advantage of. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Let's first, though, look at the same level of the atmosphere that this is. This is the 850 millibar vorticity chart or analysis. This is a satellite tool where we can see the vorticity through fancy algorithms and programming by people smarter than me. And this is the model interpretation of it going forward. All right, so down here is the area of disturbed weather with the concentrated area of vorticity that I showed you off to the northeast of this broader area. And I think it's going to be this that takes over. And like I said, it's going to kind of pivot in there, make landfall uh, over Louisiana over the next couple of days and move into the southeast. So let's put this into motion. This is basically this evening and then early tomorrow morning. There it is pivoting in, trying to pinch off and close off there, ramping up probably tropical depression, tropical storm by tomorrow afternoon very loosely organized still coming into southeast louisiana south central louisiana something like that not a very strong signature but look what happens over the next couple of days all of this energy right here in the atmosphere is just that that vorticity signature that's energy and it's summertime down here with lots of instability already there and this is going to add to the potential severe storms and tornado threat coming up. So be sure to pay attention to the Storm Prediction Center uh, this weekend into early next week as this energy traverses across the south. Very heavy rainfall for some areas, 6, 8, 10, maybe even a foot, 10 inches to a foot, which is 12 inches, right? So we got to watch that. Seriously, as this moves through some of the higher elevations of Alabama, you know, northern Alabama has some hills and mountains there, the southern end of the Appalachians. And then this gets into the mountainous areas of northern Georgia, western North Carolina. And this could be a problem. Very heavy rain, flash flooding, severe weather to the south and east of the main core of energy there. And finally, uh, early next week, it moves off as another trough comes in here, captures this energy and whisks it out into the Atlantic. And there's your Bermuda High trying to set up shop again there over the western Atlantic. So let's look at it from the humidity perspective here, the moisture. And this is really neat because you can really see sort of the lopsided look to it overall. I mean, look, it's like a giant curly cue down here, uh, a candy cane, whatever you want to call it, a big comma. It's not. I mean, look, it looks almost exactly like this system, which is a mid-latitude storm, an extra tropical feature. But because this is over such warm water, 
and we'll have a semi-warm core. It's going to be more subtropical in nature, kind of a blend between these extra tropical systems. Uh, and this clearly has drier, more stable air wrapped in. This is trying to do so. So this is a great example, sort of your hybrid system. Whereas, look right over here off of the corner, that is your more standard system. And I'll show you that in a moment on the GFS for the Eastern Pacific. That's 93E, I believe it's called. But also notice too, all the moisture feeding up into here, all the way over into Florida. So onshore flow across a large area. And let me make things very clear to you. This is going to bring with that steady onshore flow, 25, 30 knots maybe in some places constantly for a day or two. You're going to have some rip current problems along the coast where people are heading to the beaches. So Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Dauphin Island, all the way over to Destin and vicinity. You know, I mean, seriously, pay attention. If you know people going down there, this is not hype. It's not joking around, you know, whatever. Very serious. Rip currents can kill you, and they do do that, all right? We just saw recently down in Baldwin County a law enforcement officer killed trying to rescue other people, and another one uh, was hospitalized, I do believe. I read about that. So these rip currents, a side effect, but a deadly impact of a system that is sort of hybrid in nature, not a big you know newsmaker, oh, there's a big hurricane coming. Everybody pays attention when it's a Laura or a Katrina, but you got to pay equal attention when it's a 92L or a subtropical depression or whatever, because those impacts are bigger than you. Just remember that. These are bigger than you, these impacts. And if you look at it from that perspective, you know, you can stay safe. And that's the bottom line of what I want to do for you. What is this? Well, this is the H wharf, the hurricane uh, weather research forecast model specifically for hurricanes here. And what is it? This is the uh, or the level we're looking at. Again, 850 millibars. Where's the storm? <laughs> you see what I mean? It's like, I mean, the H wharf, which is, you know, pretty good at trying to blow up stuff into, you know, from a, a mountain, a molehill into a mountain, as they say. It, at least it has done that in the past. You know, not until hour 63 is there any semblance of, you know, something right there. I mean, come on. This is not going to amount to much wind and pressure wise, but I do not want to discount the fact, like I just said, that it's going to bring problems by way of rip currents, heavy rain, and the threat of severe weather for the southeast. All right, so in the Pacific, we do have this next system well on its way to developing off the coast of Mexico. This one will parallel the coast more or less, but at a distance just enough offshore that at least any direct impacts from it should remain limited. And this is what uh, the vorticity signature, signature looks like of a system that's purely tropical and that's going to develop uh, more standard characteristics than this mess over here. Watch as you can literally compare and contrast these two systems as I put this into motion. The one system goes up into the northern Gulf Coast. There's the one off of Mexico. It does approach the coast there at about hour 54. So, you know, two days from now, could be a landfall down there of a you know, tropical storm. Maybe a hurricane, wouldn't surprise me, but more likely a tropical storm. So you folks here in Mexico, you know, pay attention to that. Um, local Meteorological Service, National Hurricane Center. You know, people have internet down there. They keep up with this stuff. Yes, you're going to get a landfalling system. And it's just a darn shame it can't come up the Gulf of California here and bring some much needed moisture to the desert southwest. Maybe eventually, if it's just as long as it's not too much at one time. So before I let you go, uh, I want to reemphasize again with the system in the Gulf, because I'm very serious about this, is heading to the Gulf Coast on the weekend. A lot of people going down to the Gulf Coast first time in maybe a year. You know, now that things have opened up even more, it's going to be packed down there. The lifeguards, the beach patrol people, the county officials, whatever, they'll fly, you know, flags. They'll talk about the hazards, read up about it. They may even put stuff in your hotel room in some of these more progressive areas where they don't hide from the weather. Some places just want to bury their head in the sand, so to speak. But really, please pay attention, all right? You got little kids, grandma, grandpa, or the avid kick butt swimmer. Doesn't matter. Rip currents are bigger than you, and this is a big deal. So please be careful down there. And if you know people heading down there, tell them that Mark Suttoth 
mentioned the possibility of rip currents, not trying to scare you out of the water. I just want you to be careful while you are in the water and maybe prevent you from having to go home, you know, on ice, literally. All right? I hate to be morbid about it, but these are deadly effects. So take them seriously. One way to track stuff, I got a few of these left after the second printing. Really appreciate people helping to purchase these and uh, give our PayPal account, which is going to be our gas money. And gas is a lot more expensive than it was last year. 18 by 24 inch paper tracking map. $18 plus 4 bucks flat rate shipping in a sturdy mailing tube. I don't send it to you folded up. It's in a nice mailing tube that one of our partners, Brent, provided to me so I could ship these out in uh, in pristine condition. 18 by 24 poster size tracking chart, full color, and uh, you can order it on uh, hurricanetrack.com forward slash track map. I'll put the link in today's video description. All right, we're also on Facebook and Twitter at Hurricane Track. YouTube, of course, it's been growing, as I mentioned yesterday. Let's keep that going. I appreciate it. Love the comments. That's where I saw a lot of people talking about what was going on down in the windwards and leewards today, most of the windward islands from that tropical wave. So like and subscribe and share these videos if you if you want to. You don't have to, but if you do, it helps to grow what we're doing and we get the word out to more people. And that's what I want to do is help you from what I know of these systems to keep you safe and aware. All right, that's it from me for today. Have a great rest of your Thursday. I am Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.